Welcome, welcome. I'm Brother Thomas Lee Harris III. I'm the facilitator for the Sunday Guerrilla Men's Bible Study. And on today's lesson, what I'm going to try to do is read from a section of the Sunday Guerrilla workbook that is for men who are in um, a life recovery stage, um, just return back to God from that, that prodigal way of living, living for the world and in, in, in total disobedience to God. So um, I created a workbook for men like myself who have lived for so long with just in disobedience to God, just as a, a step guide, a reminder guide on uh, what God wants us to do and to give us purpose and we all need help and it's one thing that especially when you get older and years sometimes you're afraid to ask for help and this is it's just help and by the grace of God he sent it to me so I'm just trying to help another person I get their life right and uh, hopefully see Jesus praise God all right the uh, Sunday Gorilla this is the original manuscript, it's all beat up. The uh, Sunday Guerrilla workbook, it has different sections in it. It has a 31-day uh, a devotional, almost like Proverbs. Um, and I title it, Please Help Me God, I'm Locked Up. And they're sincere scriptures that uh, deal with a particular area in one's life when you just feel like once again, the definition of a new prison ministry is you might be on the streets free, but mentally and spiritually just locked up. So just asking God for freedom and, and deliverance from uh, disease, lifestyles that are just contrary to the, his word. And another section I have in there is called Life Lessons. And it's where I use personal, it's my personal testimony that um, through me sharing I can show how God worked a hard problem out and hopefully others can see it and that revelation to show that God can work it out for you also. So today I'm going to read from a section called My Hustle Doesn't Work Anymore. And it's, it comes from a phrase that I I've started to hear the past few years from brothers in my neighborhood or wherever I traveled in the country where guys who used to hustle in different ways just simply weren't making money anymore. And um, I want to read from, from the magazine or the workbook, the magazine's coming to, um, the workbook in, to try to give you an idea of the help that Sunday Gorilla men's Bible study and movement is, is trying to uh, offer. And this section, once again, is called Life Lessons. And the title is, My Hustle Don't Work No More. Today I'm surrounded by my fellow black brothers that seem to be frozen in time because of their inability to make a living anymore. These are men that during the 90s paid rent for girlfriends, drove nice cars, went on shopping sprees, took their children to Six Flags, vacation down south in Atlanta and Miami, and tried to enjoy life regardless of the poor economic communities they came from. The cry that echoes from most of them is, my hustle don't work no more. The hustle became, their hustle became their personal identity in the neighborhood. Their hustle was their way of life, but now it doesn't seem to work anymore. The coke, the dope, and the weed dealers. The boosters, drop checks, and credit card cashers. The gun runners, strong arms, and gangsters. The carjackers, bank robbers, and B&E dudes. The bootlegger, the hustle man, and Mr. Fix-It. They all are crying about how their hustle don't work no more. If my hustle doesn't work anymore, then I lose my place in the neighborhood. My hustle and my manhood were one. 
Once the manhood has gone, the respect of family, friends, and peers immediately begins to flee. That is why I'm surrounded by my fellow black brothers who seem to be frozen in time, shocked and stuck because their hustles don't work anymore. Thousands of men that have been reduced back down to being boys, dependent upon females for basic life necessities like food, money, and shelter. The fact that the hustle doesn't work anymore is totally unbelievable. How could something that once produced thousands of dollars overnight now only reward with jails, mental institutions, or death? Black men across the nation are stuck in mental denial and socially frozen without the tools needed to move forward in life. There are thousands of black men who cannot immediately bring home a bag full of groceries for the family. Black men who cannot immediately buy a toy for his child. Black men who cannot immediately buy a gift for his wifey. There are thousands of black men that can't immediately show their family, friends, and peers the characteristics of manhood. Therefore, they are treated like boys. Fear, confusion, embarrassment, frustration, helplessness, anger, guilt, shame, and depression dominate the emotions of thousands of black men when they are not able to manifest the characteristics of manhood when they can't provide for themselves or their loved ones. Today I'm surrounded by thousands of black men who have lost their sense of manhood all because their hustle doesn't work anymore. Thousands of black men attempt to revive their hustle over and over again but continue the insane cycle of jails, institution, or death. My hustle don't work no more, they scratch their head. My hustle don't work no more, but they try again. They, my hustle don't work no more. They get locked up again. My hustle don't work no more. They try again. My hustle don't work no more. They get locked up again. My hustle don't work no more. They get shot and killed. My hustle don't work no more. They try it again. My hustle don't work no more. The hustle doesn't work no more. It's done. It's finished. There will be no more. The hustle doesn't work no more. Amen. And that is the first part of, of the chapter. My hustle don't work no more. And men are almost frozen like deer in headlights in the community. And I'm going to go on in the next few chapters to show how God will bring that deliverance. So if you know anybody, family or friend in the community who used to be that dude, used to get money, had the bling in the cars at a time where it seemed the hustle was working. But if you see that cycle in their life of jails, mental institutions, or death, you know, this teaching, this testimony, by the grace of God, could save somebody. And that's the end of part one. Thank you.